Hey everybody, Mountain View Russ. Say hi, Mountain View Russ. Hi, Mountain View Russ. Plus, <laughs> so some of my neighbors come check out the rig. Uh, I'll give you all more details on the reveal here after the party. They won't leave until the food is gone. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Howdy, folks. Mountain View Russ here in Mountain View, Arkansas. So, this is my uh, trailer reveal. You know, obviously, anybody that builds one of these knows it's never done. Uh, you know, I've got future things, but it's done for this trip, and I wanted to do a walkthrough of everything. I thought I'd just kind of walk around and talk about everything for those that may just be dropping in. They don't have to go back and watch every video unless they want to. Uh, that's your choice. I welcome that. Appreciate that. But uh, So I'm going to kind of talk about everything. I'll try to make it quick. I've got a lot of wind this morning. Uh, I think I've got a windscreen on my mic, so hopefully it doesn't impact anything. So I did say last week or earlier this week I'd put a video out Wednesday night. We had a little get-together over here yesterday in the neighborhood for all the curious neighbors that have been watching me work on this for the last eight months. And uh, had a pretty good, pretty good response. Had about a dozen neighbors over. And uh, sorry, got somebody coming down the road here. I keep looking back to see if they're gonna come blowing by here and blow dust all over me. But uh, it's cool. So anyway, I we started with a uh, 24 foot, eight and a half wide cargo trailer. It's a covered wagon. I don't know if you can see that logo here. Um, yeah, I did a lot of research, watched, uh, you know, I ride Tiny House Adventure, watched a lot of them and uh, a lot of uh, other videos, other folks, uh, Arnis, Life After 55, a couple of the channels I like to follow. And uh, we decided, or I decided, to go with a polycore siding. Uh, and the polycore is just a little thicker. I think it's made up of uh, uh, some form of plastic with an aluminum skin somewhere. I think the aluminum's on the inside. But it, it helps reduce the uh, oil canning that you might see on a typical uh, aluminum, particularly a 030 or 040 siding. This is actually 080. Uh, I did get, I didn't get screwless. I'm not quite sure how they pull that off, but uh, it does have screws every four feet, and then it's glued or silicone to the metal joist on the inside uh, on every beam. Something to watch for. Uh, you know, I got this from uh, Load and Go Trailers up in uh, Omaha, Arkansas, the south of Missouri border. And they didn't build it. They're they're uh, the vendor for it. Uh, it comes from covered wagon. And I did have several of the glue joints on those beams not really adhering. So just a tip, you know, when you're looking at cargo trailers, maybe ask about that and find out how you know how they adhere that and so forth so on. It might help you down the road. But I don't think I'm having any real problem. I went and re-glued them uh, the best I could wherever I seen it wasn't adhering real good. So anyway, that's that's it. And I, I did go ahead and upgrade the wheels at, at the time from the standard steel rims uh, to the aluminum rims they offered. And that's another tip. You know, at the time, we were excited about getting a trailer and not really thinking about all the little details like tires, load range, uh, you know, the wheel load range. And, you know, since then, I've, you know, I've come to realize that, uh, you know, these may be perfectly fine tires or they may be just good enough. So that's something you can look into, uh, you know, as you're buying a trailer, if that's what you're going to do. Uh, I did find some information about this company, their Trail, Trail Quest, this company in Texas. And uh, they seem to be rated pretty good. They're D-rated uh, load range tires. I think they, uh, they're they good for 2,500 pounds per wheel. I, I did go, speaking of that, with the torsion axles, 
5,200 pound torsion axles. So, you know, this is a 10,000 pound trailer or, you know, to satisfy DOT, it's 9,999. Uh, so anyway, uh, but I, I think down the road, maybe next year, I may be looking at putting, you know, a little uh, uh, more robust tire on with a higher load range, whatever I can get on the 15 inch wheels. That's another restriction. You know, you may have to go up to 16 inch wheels. So if you did like me and paid extra for custom aluminum wheels, uh, they may become door stops. You know. So back to the front here, I did opt for the extended tongue. So this is a 60 inch extended tongue, just for the reasons of mounting the mini split and also for your turning radius, you know, when you're parking this thing, so you don't jackknife into your own trailer. Uh, the the jack was a manual jack. I just recently put this jack on. This is a Lippert. Uh, it's a 3,500 pound jack. And the reason I got this one is you can hook it to a battery, or you can use. They have a two-way to seven-way converter here adapter and you get the cable from them and then you don't have to keep a battery on the tongue here in my case my batteries are all in the back and i didn't want to have to run the size of cable i would have to run you know this thing pulls 30 amps and you'd have to have a pretty big cable running to my battery bank in the back so i thought that was a good solution i i had to have my uh, tow vehicle here but i just hook it up uh, you know, jack it up, lower it, level it, whatever I'm going to do, and then I stow the cable away. I do still have the original uh, small 12 volt batteries, and uh, it used to have two. It had one for the uh, emergency brake here, and then it had a second one for some LED lights they had inside on a door switch, and I, you know, I took all that out so. One's got a battery, the other one's got uh, the spider's nest of cables and, and uh, clamps that they use to connect all the cables. Uh, I could do, I could uh, put a couple in uh, parallel and, and double it, but you know that thing never gets any voltage draw unless, unless that pin gets pulled. Uh, the uh, AC unit mini split uh, did a Senville Leto uh, 12,000 BTU. Uh, this seemed to be a very popular unit with all the other cargo trailer channels. So I went for it and I wasn't disappointed. It will freeze you out of there. I did have an AC guy come do the final connection, you know, the refrigerant lines to keep the warranty intact. Uh, I built the the mounting bracket myself out of some one inch angle iron and uh, basically installed everything except for the lines and the communication cable and uh, then I had a AC guy licensed AC guy come out and bring all that through you know where I wanted and uh, connect it to the head unit and uh, it's been hooked up about three months and working great. So I'm really happy with that choice. People have asked me, 9000 or 12000 and it's not a big difference in the price. And, you know, uh, why not just go with the 12000 I added the windows. Uh, these windows come from uh, Vintage Technologies. Uh, you know, if you've been looking into this, you've probably heard of them. They, they do a lot of teardrop uh trailer parts, but they also have windows. So I got a cut in the back or a couple of egress windows and then the uh, front windows are just slider windows. Just your standard RV windows. You have to understand the width of your wall and select the right window there, but uh, they'll help you figure it out over there at Vintage Technologies. That's my uh, water fill here. Got the city water and the uh, and then the uh, fill yeah, straight into the tank. Nothing special there. Got that from Rec Pro. 
And then uh, I did 30 amp service. Uh, the cable, I think the cable came from Amazon and, and even the 30 amp plug, Amazon. You can get pretty much everything on Amazon. I decided to go with uh, barn doors instead of a ramp because you know we're not we're using the whole thing for living space, so no toys in here. So you know we're uh, Bill and Dibs like to say we're not uh, camping, we're living, and uh, Vicky and I say we're not camping, we're glamping. You know we don't <laughs> we don't camp. Uh, she would never get in a tent, and so I got to try to provide her all the uh, best I can comfort. So I've got wind blowing and I don't have a way to hook these doors. So I'm gonna pause for just a second and hook, tie these doors off and I'll be right. All right, folks, I'm back. I had to get those doors blocked off before uh, that wind caught one and knocked me out. Uh, this trailer came with the uh, hive action. You can probably see it right through there. But they're made of plastic, and the one on the right is already broke. Some wind caught it. And that's a future project to replace those with something made of metal. So this is the garage. I'll, I'll start down here. So obviously this under the bed. And I just tried to take advantage of all that space. Um, each of these bays will eventually have a slide-out tray on uh, drawer glides. Some of the four-foot glides, full extension. I did build this little tray just for this trip, just so I could get stuff back there and not have to crawl in that little hole to get it out. Uh, you know, because I need to pack some tools and stuff down there. And then here I got all my RV junk and the, uh, you know, your standard uh, Tupperware type uh, tubs. And then this bay will be where we'll store our instruments. Uh, you know, if you've watched the videos, you know we like uh, going to music festivals, and that's why we built this thing. Uh, we'll go and stay up to a week sometimes and listen to music and jam and pick and play music and stay up half the night and all that good stuff. So that's where our instruments are going to travel. Eventually, they'll have a tray. They'll have a strap down to carry them. And then the rest of this is, uh, you know, the electronics. So, yeah, you know, I've got your standard uh, 30 amp coming in. Uh, I did a uh, Progressive uh, Industries uh, surge protection unit there first. And then I, then I come over to my inverter and I've watched a lot of videos. Explorers.life was a very valuable resource, in fact. When I installed this uh, this much of the unit, I pulled up one of Nate's full installation videos and just kept pausing it and walking through it step by step with him making cables, hooking up to the inverter, hooking up to the uh, Lynx distributor. Uh, those that do this stuff are familiar with that. Victron, uh, they're you know one of the leaders in in this industry. Uh, I went with Sun Gold Power on my inverter and my batteries because it came as a package. Uh, it also has uh, 600 watts of uh, solar panels, six solar panels, and a uh, solar charge controller. I haven't installed them yet. I uh, just haven't had time uh, when we get back from our trip and if the weather's okay. I'll start on that before winter really sets in. You know, we're in North Arkansas. And if not, I'll, I'll work on it next spring. So eventually, up here somewhere, I'll have a charge controller that will come in and go back over to this link distributor and uh, contribute its uh, electricity to charging the batteries. Um, yeah, I, I built a little tray for the batteries so I can strap them down. It's just screwed down there. I can unscrew it if I need to pull it out. Uh, after I get the complete solar package installed, I'll do a uh, more detailed video about that for anybody interested. Uh, Sun Gold does have uh, several videos, probably about a dozen on their website of various customers that have 
use their products anywhere from RV to full off-grid house installs, farm installs, stuff like that. Uh, this is a 3000 watt inverter. It uh, has a built-in transfer switch and I believe it's like a 10 millisecond uh, detection and transfer. I did a test and had it on shore power and so when it's on shore power you can see it says well now it says line mode but eventually it will rotate around and say bypass and that just means that it's uh it's just passing right through shore power there it is so if i were to pull that shore power go flip the breaker it would uh, switch over to inverter so my little test just to see how well it worked i put the tv on and uh went and flipped the shore power breaker off and the tv kept right on cranking so obviously 10 milliseconds is quick uh, I did cable management. I saw this on Explorers.life. Uh, he actually painted his blue to match all the blue hardware. I didn't do that. I didn't have time. But I really like that. Uh, you know, I like to try to keep things neat. You know, this stuff here. Yeah, you know, I just couldn't see putting another one in there for that. I may one day, but who knows? But I do like that because I've got all my AC lines and the uh, the high amp. DC stuff in there and uh, they seem to uh, set well in there this uh, this is just plastic but it's very firm anyway I won't go into a whole lot more details here if anybody has any questions just drop a comment I'll be glad to go into more detail of what I know this is my first round with this kind of stuff so uh, yeah I'm mainly uh, reflecting what I've learned from other folks on YouTube. And then, of course, this side. Looks like the other side. I got me a couple of 12-volt exterior lights out here and a little handle. I haven't selected a set of steps yet. You know, we're pretty close to the ground. Uh, so the steps, I'm going to have to find the right steps. I've built a set of steps right now and uh, I'll just carry them for this trip they're heavy though uh, one of the steps I really like I don't remember the name but they're they are uh, I'm gonna get myself in trouble here <clears throat> they're the uh, diamond shape that they they extend out kind of like the they're articulating I guess in a way but uh, they self-level uh, and they'll fold back into the door. Anyway, they're they're a little pricey, but uh, I may go with them. If I do, I'll I'll uh, I'll show you what I did. I can't. I'm coming back around just because I forgot because you can't see it. But down here is all my black water, so you may be able to see that. Sorry for the shaking. So I've got my black water, gray water coming together into a combo valve. And I put a little uh, Camco cap on it so you can hook a garden hose up to it if you just need to drain off your gray water into another tank or something. So it's kind of scary low to the ground, but I've had this thing a couple of hundred miles and I haven't hit the ground yet. And in fact, speaking of that, uh, when I did the weigh on this thing, I ended up about a little over 1,300 pounds on the tongue. And I had a 10,000-pound uh, equalizer weight distribution hitch. I had one already from a prior travel trailer. And I'd put it on this one. Boy, it's got a 1,000-pound max tongue weight. It's the 2-inch shank. Uh, I've got a big F351 ton. And I looked on the specs on that, and with the two and a half inch shank, I can carry 1,750 pounds tongue weight. And so I upgraded to a 16,000 pound equalizer hitch. Of course, it's not all here, just the L brackets, but they're 30% uh, beefier probably than the ones from the 1,000 pounds. So, anyway. Uh, one thing that adds is it lifts the trailer up a little more to get the distribution correct. I'll find out as I'm uh, heading to Texas 
this weekend uh, how well the distribution is. Uh, you know, I went through uh, their formulas and measurements, and it seems to be set up correct. And I made a couple of 15 mile trips, uh, round trips down to Walmart, uh, pulling it, and it seemed to pull okay. So we'll find out. So I'm going to walk inside here and we'll look All at right, the inside. So here we are inside. If you've seen any of my videos prior, you've seen this scene, but this for all the newbies, first time they've watched my videos. So this is the rear end of the tra trailer I'm looking at, and that, that wall is the other side of the garage wall. So I built all the cabinetry back there, the, uh, you know, the shirt closets, I guess they're called. And, you know, in a typical RV, that front end is curved, so, and not quite that wide. So you don't have quite that much space, but that's a lot of space to hang, hang in clothes. I did put a uh, 30 amp shut off inside, so if we had some reason, I didn't have to run outside in the middle of the night and try to shut off uh, the power. I can just hit it right there, and that uh, that actually gets it uh, uh, coming out of the inverter. Uh, no, it no, it gets it uh, uh, coming straight off the shore plug. I correct myself. So that's be like pulling the short plug. So another one over there. And of course, uh, I did some uh, bottom cabinet side tables. I'm going to, uh, when I get back, you can see there's about a 12 inch drop off the mattress down there. Probably make it kind of difficult when you're laying in bed to, you know, put a clock or anything like that. So I may, I've seen uh, other RVs where about halfway back they build yet another cabinet on top of that with a drawer in it and raise it up for laying you know glasses phones and stuff so I may do that you know I was uh, constrained for time trying to make the uh, my deadline of the end of October this uh, little chest of drawers I built that sorry I bumped into something um, got this little TV up here you know on an arm so we can look at it from the couch or from the bed and then, I, like I said, I used all the space possible. Uh, we did these step-ups, so I would have garage space. Uh, you know, if I could have not stepped it up and just walked straight on the floor, but then we would have lost a lot of valuable space. And underneath these runs is where the electrical and plumbing runs underneath there. And all this will come out so I can access it. Uh, these little, obviously, these little drawers will will slide out, but uh, you know, be kind of hard to get to anything down there. But uh, I'm gonna undress this bed, this drawer here, and you can see back there uh, the water pump, and then full access to all my storage back there. And actually, the bed, uh, the bed actually lifts up here, and I've got some latches, but I'm not gonna pick it up because it's heavy. I actually got it hinged about halfway back on the mattress, so only the last two feet tilts up. But it'll make it convenient for getting the stuff. Sorry, I'm trying to straighten up my mess. Um, so these, if you're familiar with these uh, cargo trailers, that's a wheel well, and over here is a wheel well. And so I had to do something, you know, they're inside the trailer to get that full eight and a half inch width. So what I did was put my uh, fresh water and gray water tank here. And so they're inside, and these end covers uh, will unscrew and come off on both sides, as well the couch. Will uh, the top will come off so I can actually lift the tank out from the top on this. I had these cushions made, uh, customcushions.com online. You just give them the dimensions and, and they'll custom make them for you. And I just got Velcro on the back to hold them in place. I had dreams of a uh, DC actuated uh, leg lifts there. Just ran out of time. To try to work all that out uh, maybe down the road 
I might have to build that out of steel. I did some tests with wood and those actuators were just ripping the wood apart. So yeah, with the weight of your legs on it. So I'm going to have to weld that up out of some uh, angle iron, maybe some uh, three quarter inch angle iron. Again, the, uh, the end of this cabinet comes loose. So if you have to pull the gray water tank, you have to pull it out this way, obviously. And the, the, uh, freshwater tank would come straight up. Um, uh, the fridge, I built a little cabinet here to hold the fridge and, uh, it is bolted in right up here. You might be able to see that. And then I've got a series of, uh, of, uh, connections in the back that they, when you slide it in, that actually goes up underneath a, a metal bracket and holds it in place. Uh, stupid user trick I did. I put this on a GFCI plug that's behind the fridge. And I was just telling Vicky the, uh, the other day, if that thing trips, I got to pull the fridge out to reset it. So let's hope it doesn't trip on this, uh, trip. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I put Vicky a, a plug in here for setting up the table. And that's actually a separate circuit from the fridge. Uh, so a couple of options. Uh, I may just cut an access panel here so I can reach in. Probably do one right above that, a little door, so I could just open that up and reach in and push the reset on the plug. Or I may rewire it and move that plug out here and then move another plug back inside. Uh, just a non-GFCI and have it on the load end of the GFCI plug. And then if it trips, I'll have my uh, reset outside. So we'll figure that one out eventually. Uh, the little table here, I, I built that myself. That's just some glued up pine boards you buy from Home Depot. 99% of the building material in here is from Home Depot. And uh, it actually, it's on a French cleat. So it will move. The legs will actually fold up. I've got some little folding latches I bought off Amazon. They, they have a button to lock them in place. So when we travel, I'll take it loose and fold it up and put it in that closet or lay it on the bed. But uh, as you can see, see if I can do this with one hand. When we're both at the table, I can actually slide it down and make room for this person to actually get behind the table. And I'd be kind of be sitting in front of the door, but uh, the point is we could both sit at the table at the same time. So that was a neat idea. I've seen a lot of French cleat stuff online, and I thought that would be a good use for a uh, way to attach this table to the wall. I did... Uh, Put some adjustable legs on the bottom because no matter how hard you try, you know, nothing's perfectly level. Speaking of the floor uh, and the walls, uh, what I did, you know, when I got the cargo trailer home, and I've got a lot of videos showing that, you know, you can go back and dig through the videos. I've got a playlist and they're in order, uh, but I've got two inches of the pink foam. In the walls so i've got a series of furring strips and stuff to allow me to do that and they're all screwed to the metal studs and then finally the uh, everybody's favorite beadboard paneling and then on the floor i left the original floor down uh, i talked to the sales rep at load and go and they said that floor was uh it's a special uh not particle board, it's an OSB style board, but it's treated and it's water waterproof. So I left it down, then I put an inch of foam, pink foam down, and then I put another uh, half inch of plywood down on top of that, and then my flooring. And uh, one of the other things I did on the trailer, you see I don't have a step, I went ahead and had them build it at seven foot six and eliminate the wheel well so that you're walking straight in. I got that from Bill and Deb. I ride Tiny House Adventures. That was a good idea, so I adopted that. 
uh, word of warning, all this adds weight, you know, uh, the, I, I went ahead and put the finished floor down from end to end before I ever started building anything. Cause I just wanted the floor underneath even the hidden areas. So like the garage, if you opened it up, you seen a nice floor instead of plywood. Um, but it adds weight. Uh, you know, it's probably a couple hundred pounds of flooring down here. You know, you pick one of those cartons up, 14 square foot cartons, and it, you know, it weighs 40 pounds. And I think I used about 10 cartons, so that's over 400 pounds just in the flooring material. Something to consider. You got to keep up with the weights. I kind of did, but I didn't really do a good job. And, you know, my finished weight here is a little over 8,000 pounds. You know, uh, I think we'll be just fine still. The cabinets, I bought them from Home Depot, just your standard uh, oak front uh, builder grade cabinets. Uh, they added a lot of weight. That pantry is uh, 120 pounds. I probably got 400 pounds in cabinets there. If I did it again, I might think twice about that. At, at a minimum, maybe go on the inside and drill the side panels full of, you know, two inch holes and then put a, a thin eighth inch plywood back over the top of them or just build them myself. But another time constraint, it was so much easier to just buy pre-made cabinets. But they look good. So on the cabinets, I use I also use them as a chaseway for all my plumbing and wire. Now the plumbing is exposed here because it needs to be. But you'll see these chaseways here, and I've run, I've built them in both of these cabinets. That one goes full high to uh, you know keep my AC and DC lines from getting tangled up and you know, mop bucket or a trash can and getting pulled on. And then ultimately they run behind these these drawers. And this was an idea I got from Bill and Deb, our ride Tiny House Adventures. Uh, he they built pedestals in their kitchen area. So I just bring the electrical up and I built these little pedestals. And so none of my electrical is buried in the wall. Same here. Got me a, a kitchen outlet, GFCI, and then a switch to turn the lights on and off the kitchen lights. The backsplash, Home Depot. Actually, we got that at Lowe's, but it's a peeling stick. It was it was a little challenging because it's not just squares. They you know they interlock and getting them, and they've got a you know, highly adhesive 3M tape on the back. So you got to hit it right when you stick them down there first time. There ain't no pulling them loose. You'll pull the uh, skin off your wall panel. But they look good. Uh, typical 12 volt RV lights. I did some more over the bed there. I don't have them on. Reading lamps. Nice little. Uh, Deep sink I got, uh, I think from Home Depot, bought that online. And then our pantry is where I do a lot of our uh, plumbing mechanicals. You can just barely see the uh, hot water heater there. I've got a six gallon uh, EcoSmart hot water heater behind that. And I'll, I'll link a video to where I've got this all opened up. Uh, and uh, let you see. I'm not going to undo this now, but uh, if you're interested, you can go look at the video. Also behind that, I've got a, a marine sump pump. It's called a Rule, R-U-L-E. And that came from Bill and Deb as well. And you can see here, I'm just using this Camco P-Trap, RBP trap And there's the line, and it goes on over through these cabinets. And ends up in that rule box and it's got a float in it and when it gets to a certain level it comes on and it pumps water all the way up here across and then back into the gray water tank and I was I was curious how well it was going to do and it does a, a great job of course I haven't taken a 
long shower in this thing, so we'll find out. But you got to treat the shower like you do any RV, you know, the sailor shower, on and off, on and off, you know, wet down, soap up, rinse off. Got some groceries we're heading out, heading out here shortly, Saturday. Got to have a little Debbie's for road trips. Thank you, Vicky. I brought all my indoor consoles over here. So I got the Victron Smart Shunt. For those of y'all that do this, you know what that is. And then just my standard uh, RV tank monitor stuff. Got the freshwater full, almost. I actually found out uh, if I fill my freshwater tank up, it actually lightens my uh, uh, tongue weight. Of course, it's going to add to my total weight. Uh, I'm only using a water pump switch on this. These others, they light up, but they're not actually hooked up. I mean, these are uh, milliamps that they can handle. That's like a 20 gauge wire back there on these switches. What I did on the water pump, uh, I've actually got a 16 gauge wire running from this switch back to the water pump to where I have a relay. And that relay then opens and closes the circuit on a uh, 12 gauge wire for the water pump. And you could do the same for the water heater. Uh, you'd have to, uh, you know, do a AC capable relay, you know, DC AC relay. I'm not familiar with what that would take, but I'm sure it exists. So my, uh, water heater, if I need to kill it, I got to go outside to my sub panel and, and flip the breaker. I got it on its own 20 amp circuit. And then this is the remote display for the uh, Sun Gold Inverter. Gives you all the details about the state of your batteries, your shore power, so forth, so on. I'm still learning this stuff. You know, I know just enough to be dangerous right now. Uh, put our remotes and fire extinguishers here. Here's a head unit to the Leto. So I custom built this wall with this thing in mind. You know, so the door is a little narrow. Uh, you know, just built the doors ourselves. But we did end up with something that's you don't get too often in RVs, and that's a big closet. You know, get the broom in there, get the mop in there, any long hanging clothes, jackets, stuff like that. Have plenty of room. Put some sodas down in the floor, boots, shoes, a little step stool. And I also, I, I haven't finished this, uh, but that back wall on the top is removable because my refrigerant lines are actually back there. Uh, I had a 20 foot, 25 foot line set and ended up having an extra nine feet. So the AC guy just kind of looped them down and then brought it back up inside the cavity of the wall. And I used, uh, on most of my cabinets, I use these bulldog latches. Uh, they seem to do a pretty good job. I've had these on for, uh, like I said, the trips to the scale, and none of them came open. And that reminds me, uh, my drawers did come open. The, the bulldogs wouldn't fit those. So uh, I ordered some other latches, uh, RV-type latches. And they wouldn't work either. They were too big. So I came up with a solution that I hope works. I've got a 16 penny nail and a uh, little zip tie here. And when we're ready to roll, I've got a hole that just goes all the way through this cabinet into the drawer. And that locks the drawer in place. So. It's just going to be a process of what you got to do, you know, checklist to get ready to roll. Just like everything else, uh, you know, I've got the, you know, the extension bar up there. I'm thinking what, what I may do is cut some pieces of wood about six inches high that you just slide in behind this top and bottom. And that will just keep this stuff from wanting to shift and hit the door. And knock the door open. I'll see if I have any problems for this trip. If I do, I'll, I'll build them. Then 
when you get where you're going, you just store them away in that massive garage. Uh, what else in here? I got us some blinds. I've still got to do some valances. That'll wait till the next this trip's over. That little boing sound, that's this thing. Every time I open the door, this thing rattles. Yeah, I had to put a lock in there so you could lock the bathroom from the inside. You got a pretty nice size bathroom. Uh, it's the front four feet of this box plus the V nose. So, uh, 32, about 40 square feet, I guess, in here. Uh, bigger than most RV bathrooms, I'd say. Uh, got us a nice little round shower. Uh, if I did this again, I'd probably think twice about using this glass door shower because this added a lot of weight to the front. This uh, shower is about 150 pounds with that glass. I'm trying to see if we can get far enough back. But it's a nice shower. It's like 38 inches across. You know, the last travel trailer we had, I think it was like a 32 inch shower. Again, you may see this at the top of all the walls. That's where all the DC wiring is running another Bill and Deb thing. I don't know that they invented that, but that's where I, I uh, got the idea from. I copied a lot of stuff they did. A towel bar, a little hamper. I built the uh, vanity just because of the angled wall. Thought it'd just be easier to build one. A little Rec Pro sink, just plastic sink. And then behind the medicine cabinet, uh, is wiring running up here. Got a you know little uh, GFCI plug in here. And then when I went with the Dometic porcelain commode, you know the long commode, the tall commode. I hate those little short squatty commodes. Yeah, you know, so that added probably 30, 35 pounds to the front of the nose. Yeah, and then just made some cabinetry where I could. Um, got me a little tie-off bungee here to tie this thing off when we travel so that thing's not sliding in and out. And I've tested it. It works. Works just fine. So, guys, that's uh, that's it, I believe. Oh, well, I forgot. You know, Max Fan, if you had a keen eye, you already seen that. You got the, you know, remote Max Fan, the auto lift and all that. Can't show it to you from the outside. That reminds me in the bathroom. I also had the Max Fan dome. Uh, so when we're uh, in here using the shower, we can turn that thing on. And that will vent everything out and not uh, not get too much moisture in this room. One of, one of the main issues I have with this bathroom is because it's on the back side of the AC, it doesn't get any direct air conditioning. And I can see it getting a little warm in there on a warm day. I'm thinking about looking at getting a, a fan to pass through the wall that will suck air from the main cabin into the bathroom. But we'll see. We'll see how intolerable it is on this trip. We'll be in this thing for a week. Going down to Old Mill Music Festival in Kennard, Texas. All right. Well, oh my goodness. 23 minutes on this video. Most of y'all dropped off about 15 minutes ago. Hopefully not. Uh, and uh, I've got uh, also the video from outside. So this is quite a long video. I hope you enjoy seeing all the details. And if you have any questions about uh, the real technical details, uh, feel free to drop me a comment in here. Uh, all of my videos were just kind of the after the fact what I did. I didn't really do build videos and go into detail, you know, set one up on a tripod and just make you watch me work. Uh, I figure most people can understand what I'm doing when I explain it. And if you need more information, just holler at me and I'll, I'll get back to you. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, I started this just for friends and family to keep up with what, what I'm doing. And amazingly, other people are interested too. I've, I've got uh, 
I think, uh, 16,000 views on this site, which is nothing in YouTube terms, but uh, for Mountain View Russ, that's pretty good. I'm pretty proud of that. All right, guys. Talk to you later.